All right, welcome back to the episode of Beer, Bacon, and Bros. Tonight we got the full cast. We got Adam, we got Alex, we got Chris, and we got Keith. Uh, we're going to jump into our predictions for the 2023 Big Ten Football Championship uh, predictions. As always, make sure you hit that subscribe button for us. We're on the journey for 300. We appreciate you if you're already a subscriber and coming back for another episode. Make sure you hit the like button on the video so that it does become more popular. And as always, you know you can hit us in the comments. We will get back with you. So... Big Ten, uh, Power Conference, uh, not surprisingly, three big names on this list here. Um, the rest of the conference, you know, pretty much has real nice money if you're really just looking to waste some of your money. But uh, for us, jumping into the predictions, I'll give you the odds. We got Michigan is actually the favorite to win the Big Ten, which is a little bit of a surprise to me. I usually think that Ohio State gets the biggest pool and, and media love, but... Well, I Michigan. think after the, the last two years, I think Michigan has solidified themselves right now as the better team. And I, I think what feeds into that, too, is Ohio State lost a good bit of talent. Yeah. So there are a couple more question marks. I'm not saying <laughs> yeah. the, the talent filling in can't be just as good, but it is unknown at this time. Yeah. So I, I, I And the more I think about it, I guess, McCarthy, like your, your great mention of the talent, you have your returning quarterback in Michigan. You don't have your returning quarterback at Ohio State. Like or, Kyle, or Kyle receiver. McCord. Yeah, as well. So, Kyle, you know, Kyle McCord. Now, Marvin Harrison Jr. Yeah, Marvin Harrison Jr. Yeah, yeah, he's a Heisman Trophy candidate at receiver. But, you know, Kyle McCord, the question of, like, what's he going to look like for Ohio State is kind of the – granted, Ohio State thinks he's going to be Joe Burrow, like when Joe Burrow transferred to LSU. Yeah. It wasn't uh, let's, let's see. Smith and Jigba? Yes. Yeah, Smith, Ohio State? He's gone. Yeah, Smith yeah. and Jigba is a huge he's receiver. He's in Seattle. Yeah, so yeah. – I think for Michigan having the quarterback, but Michigan, Ohio State, Penn State, Wisconsin, Iowa, Minnesota, uh, in, in that order. I mean, by the time you get down to it, actually Rutgers and Northwestern and Indiana all tied for the worst odds to win the Big Ten. So, um, plus 20,000. Man, that's... Yeah, the Ducks. So, they, so what you're saying, if I put a, so if I put a, a futures bet for the Ducks and Indiana <laughs> to win the Big Ten, yeah, what's that pay? The Ducks to win the Stanley Cup. Yeah, yeah. that'd be ooh, that's a lot of money. So, um, anybody? I mean, anybody have one that's immediately standing out to them? Honestly, I just it's Mich I think it's gonna be Michigan. Yeah. I think it's the, the tables have turned a little bit, and we're gonna see a Cause changing of the guard for maybe a year Michigan or two. Michigan get Ohio State again this year at home? Let's look. Because. Yeah, it should be back at the big. No, it should be at the big house this year. That's what I'm saying. It, it is indeed. Yeah, it's back in the big house. And then do they get? Is it Penn State on the road or is it Penn State at home? It will be Penn State on the road. So much, okay. much like uh, Georgia and Clemson were for South Carolina, they're opposites. Okay. So, so, um, I guess when do they go to Penn State? Uh, not till November 11th. Okay, so still kind of later half of the year. Yeah. Um. I, I I still think it's gonna I think it's gonna be Michigan. Um <coughs> Penn State, I think has looked good the last two years. Um and to be honest with you, I think I think Ohio State finishes third. Ooh, I think I think it goes nice. Michigan, Penn State, Ohio State this year. I I am not far off that prediction actually. I'm flipping Penn State and, and Michigan. Michigan. I I think this has been such a quietly great offseason for Penn State. Like, yes, you lose Sean Clifford at quarterback, but everything else basically at Penn State is coming back. And yeah. so it's just like a quiet offseason of everybody's talking about Ohio State, everybody's talking about Michigan. James Franklin's done a great job of, one, coaching at Penn State, and two, recruiting and using the transfer portal. The big, you know, this just feels like a nice, sleepy, quiet off season for Penn State. To like, yeah, just keep, people. don't just keep staying off of us. Yeah, don't talk about us. You know, just let us get into this. Yep. And, and some favorable games. I mean, you know, yes, you do have to go to Ohio State, but you do get Michigan at home. Uh, you know, Michigan State's on the road. Maryland's on the road. Northwestern's on the road. Iowa, you get at home. You have UMass, West Virginia, Delaware as your out of conference stuff. Like. No, no real competition there. Yeah. You know, the truth is no real competition there. So, and you, I mean, even Northwestern on the road should be bad. And no, Michigan, Michigan State's falling apart. Northwestern on the road is, I mean, a blessing. Like if you're gonna have a road game, let me let, get let me get Northwestern yeah. on the road. 
Um, and shoot, even Maryland on the road is, I mean, I know Maryland has gotten a little bit better. You know, everybody's hyped about Talia. And, and yeah. so, you know, let's see what that passing offense can do. But, uh, you know, truly nothing, nothing, the big, the big advantage is having Iowa and Michigan at home. Obviously the Ohio State is probably your toughest, is certainly your toughest road game. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, and the Illinois-Northwestern road game combos. It's pretty sweet to have that as your road games. Yeah, I mean, if you look like if you look back, obviously Illinois was eight and five. They were the best, I guess, the best on the other side. No Purdue on the other side, but you're getting Illinois and Iowa, where you avoid. I think Wisconsin. Real, yeah, the real sleepers this all season Wisconsin. is Purdue, Wisconsin, and Nebraska. Those are the teams on that side of the the western side of the Big Ten that everybody's talking about. Yeah, and so, you yeah. need to avoid them. The West is definitely up in the air for who's going to win. I don't think there's a clear cut favorite on the West. Because there's, there's just so much talent in the West. Now with Matt Rule coming in to Nebraska and they, you know, all the hype is surrounding that, Minnesota's always been a sneaky good team. Robo. And uh, Wisconsin getting uh, Fickle to come in and coach. Yeah. I mean, you know, they, that, that brings in another you know, tough, you know, another really good coach to come in to coach the Badgers. So I think that's, that's going to help. I, them I think Nebraska is going gonna, gonna to win it all with the new coaching staff they have. Um, the guys were phenomenal at both the Carolina teams. Um, so I think they're going to do phenomenal in Nebraska. <laughs> yeah. Well, just kidding. Um, I'm sticking with Michigan. Yeah, I was going to say like in the in 2033. Is that what you're predicting? Is Nebraska? No. <laughs> so, Mark uh, Satterfield's a great OC man. No. Nebraska's going to love having him. No, Matt no. Rule's going to be a better head coach at the college. I mean, we are at the collegiate at, level. He at would. Collegiate level, he's a much better co- he's a much better collegiate coach. So. I mean, Matt Rule at Nebraska is not going to be bad for Nebraska. I think that's going to be good. Marcus Satterfield being there on the other hand might be bad. Yeah. But uh, Matt Rule being there is definitely going to be a plus for Nebraska moving forward, just like Luke Bickle is going to be a plus for Wisconsin moving forward. Yeah, we'll see. I'm I'm a little I'm a little intrigued by the Luke Fickle to Wisconsin because I think most people thought, hey, Luke Fickle is going to take a Penn State, Ohio State, or a Michigan job when he leaves Cincinnati, and then going to Wisconsin was a little bit of a surprise in my opinion. Like. It felt like he either jumped too early or he wasn't getting the interest from some of these other major jobs yeah. that were open, which well, surprised yeah, but, me. Yeah, but I don't think Penn State nor Ohio State are going to open up anytime soon. Michigan would have been the only one that would have opened up. And how long are you going to sit around and wait on Harbaugh to make his decision if he's going to go back to the NFL or not? Yeah, true. I so, I mean, if you want to get into a Power 5, get into Wisconsin, which is which has had success in the Big Ten and they've come out, come out of the West as champions – yeah. Multiple times in the last couple of you know the last couple of years, and they always seem to produce really good offensive lines and really good running backs. So, you know, I mean, I don't see. I, I don't. I don't think it was a bad move for Fickle at all. I just. I, I think it was a smart move considering Ryan Day's not leaving Ohio State anytime soon, and yeah. James Franklin's not going to get run out of Penn State unless something just just tragically happens. Yeah. And like I said, with Michigan Harbaugh, you just never know how long he's going to be sitting on the sitting on the seats of moving yeah. back to the NFL or not. So. I, I, I think it was a great move for Fickle to go to move into Wisconsin. You taking Michigan as well, or who are you, who are you feeling for your prediction? Um, I don't know. That's tough. I mean, Ohio State's always always going to be one of those top top teams, but with Michigan bringing back so much, especially bringing back their quarterback, I'll go Michigan to take it. Okay. I'm, I'm going to give you these three teams, and I want you to tell me who has the most wins this season: Minnesota, Wisconsin, or Nebraska. Most wins. Where did um, where did Wisconsin finish last year? They finished seven and six. Is that with their bowl win? No. Mm. Or is it seven and six before the bowl win or a bowl game? I'm gonna go Minnesota on that one. Yeah, I'm going row the boat as well. A little row the boat action. They've got maintained success for what Minnesota <laughs> is. That was with the bowl win over Oklahoma State. Uh, Nebraska and Wisconsin have just got. Too much new to to gamble on right now for my, you know, for to feel confident. I'm gonna stick with Minnesota. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I, I think, think I, I think Nebraska gets to potentially that six win season. Yeah, uh, I, 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 I can I, I, I can they, I see Nebraska easily going bowling. I, I I see them having the most potential to be or the most upside, but I I think Minnesota is the team that's going to be the most consistent and, and be back at that eight to nine win threshold. Yeah. So from the I don't, I'll take Wisconsin. Actually, so Wisconsin has the best odds via CBS, then Minnesota, then Nebraska. But I'll be honest, I think I think Nebraska is going to really surprise some people. Like Matt Rolls a really good coach, and they had some really good talent at Nebraska 
for the last two years that just hasn't transitioned, like especially Casey Thompson, the quarterback. Like it just hasn't transitioned for them. So well, they were in every game last year, right? And they lost like a point, lost in the last minute, like on pretty much everything when that when that their their MO last year. Yeah, I'm looking. Like yeah, they lost yeah, to Northwestern by three. They lost to Georgia Southern by three. They got smoked by Oklahoma in this prize. Lost to Purdue by six. Lost to Minnesota by seven. Lost yeah, to so, Wisconsin by one. Yes, and they were in every game. Yeah, that they should have been in. Yeah. So, I mean, that's that's pretty much a, a combined 22 points for four more wins. So Yeah, which is doable. Which would put them at 8-4. Um, yeah, which would also put them at 4-8. Yeah. So, I, I and I look at their schedule, like, obviously starting at Minnesota is going to be tough, but you also got to remember that Minnesota is replacing their starting quarterback, starting running back, and number one receiver on offense, on an offense that really wasn't even that good. Uh, you know, Colorado, a lot of talk about them. We've, we've, we've yeah. talked about them already, but – um, you know, you get Michigan at home, you get Maryland and Purdue at home, you get Iowa at home. Your your toughest road game is at Wisconsin late in the season. There's maybe a chance. Yeah, maybe a chance. Like I said, I definitely see them being a six to eight win team next year. I just don't know if they're going to be if they're going to win the West. I don't, I don't think they win the West, but I think they they do move into that six to seven, maybe eight wins. So they are going to be bowling next year, like Alex said. Like so, like <coughs> like last year, can Ohio State, Penn State, and Michigan all win eleven games again this year? I would say be lucky to go to a fucking bowl game next year. <laughs> I'm, just kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Um, no, I think I think there's some, I don't I think I think they'll have the, take, get, I think they'll have I think they'll right have right like now. a ten win season. I think um, nine I think win I, season. But I, I think Ohio State's gonna have a an unacceptable year for their. I fans. think Ohio State goes ten wins. Uh, Penn State and Michigan both go 11. Yeah. Yeah, 10, 10 wins for Ohio State, so. Then two losses being Penn State and Michigan. Yeah, without a without a bowl game loss, there are two losses. I mean, they're at Notre Dame, too. I'll go with that. Notre Dame's always a <coughs> Fair. Okay. So, two regular season losses being, uh, Notre, being Michigan. And they've already got the time scheduled for the first – Four, Four games. games of their schedule. It's the big team. Man. Look, they shit. They got the time scheduled for Michigan. Michigan, Ohio State's State always already. noon. It's, it's always, always the noon because the big noon kickoff. Yeah, they it's always, always that. It's always that's noon. the prime time slot for the big ten. Yeah. So I th- yeah, I yeah, think they lose Penn State. The, uh, I think they lose Penn State and Michigan. Mm-hmm. Michigan, I think, loses. Michigan, Michigan can run the table again. Well, you would have you would have Michigan losing to um, Penn State or, or Ohio State. Okay. You'd have Michigan losing to nobody then. If, Penn State. Okay. Then Penn State loses to who? Uh, I would have to pull up the schedule again. Well, you just said that Michigan and Penn State are going to beat Ohio State to put them yeah. at ten and two. So, if you're if you're taking Michigan to win, then you couldn't have Penn State beat Michigan. Who else does Penn State have? Nobody. Nobody. Yeah. They, uh, what does Michigan have then? I don't even know if Michigan has an opener this year. That's tough. No. The Big Ten plays nobody at the beginning of the season. Yeah. East Carolina, UNLV, Bowling Green, scary. And then Rutgers, scary. Hey, Bowling Green beat Florida a couple years ago. <laughs> yeah, Michigan's got Michigan's at Penn State, at Michigan State. Maybe they trip up there. Maybe at Minnesota. No, ain't nobody tripping up in Michigan State. I know. They gave Mel Tucker a nine-year contract, and they're ready to get out. <laughs> I don't know. I can, see, I can see Michigan going undefeated okay. in the way we season. Okay. I, don't, I, don't well, yeah, I mean, they're, they're, the, they're the only ones that can. If you're if you're saying that Ohio State's going to lose two, Michigan would be the only one that would go undefeated. So who who wins the Western side of this? We've talked a lot about the three in the East. Who wins got, the Western side? I got side? Wisconsin. You're taking Wisconsin coming yeah. back? Okay. Okay. Mm. Uh, I, Purdue. I'm, I'm with him. I got my money on Purdue. Purdue. Cut, cuts and hard transferring from Texas over to Purdue. Now they have another. I mean, they already had a, a couple good quarterbacks that knew how to throw the ball, but now they got more of a dual threat quarterback extending that offense. A guy that's been in a big system at Texas. I'm, I would like my chance. I would definitely like my chances with Purdue this year. Yeah, I would say uh, either Purdue or Iowa. I like Iowa. Always sleeping. 
Iowa got a. Iowa got the Mich- the other Michigan quarterback that transferred, the guy that was there the um, that got replaced by uh, McCarthy this past year. Yeah. Um, I can't remember what his name is, though. I know who you're talking about. So, Iowa, Iowa may actually have a quarterback in their offenses here. They don't have to just run the ball 46 times better? a game. I must say, are you sure it's just not another running back that they put under center? <laughs> no, no. This is this is an actual guy that can throw the football down the field. Yeah, C.J. Beathard. Yeah. <laughs> so... All right, any last comments for the Big Ten? Put a bow on it. Yeah, put a bow All on right. it. Hit us in the comments. Let us know who you think is going to win the Big Ten here in 2023. And as always, we appreciate you. Like, comment, subscribe.